Princess Sazakina, ma'am. Princess? A poor one, I suppose. Yes, ma'am. They haven't got their own carriage. They came in three cabs, and the furniture they brought with them, it isn't what one might call elegant, ma'am. Well, it could have been worse. But all the same, a princess. Does that impress you? I mean, we could write home and tell everyone. We've got a princess living next door. It's not very polite to stare at girls like that, is it, young man? To town. Can I come with you? No, not this time. <laughs> yeah. What's the matter? Why are you so happy? Have you shot the crow? Come on, I'll race you. You won't catch me. Of course I will. Go, go.
Why do you never answer when I call you? I did. Has your father gone? Into town. Into town. Why is he never here when I need him? What's happened? I've got a letter from my new neighbor, the princess. A letter? What does it say? She wants to be invited into the house. I read it. Terrible handwriting. Yes, and her spelling's not the best either. She sounds rather vulgar. I think we have to invite her. In any case, she wants something, I suppose. You don't need to read it all. Just go and ask her for lunch tomorrow. What about the daughter? Well, her too, I suppose. Where are you going? Put on her side. What do you want? Is Princess Sazakina at home, please? Ronnie Percy, did you go to the police station? You've got a visitor. What? Somebody's come? The young man from next door. Please come into the drawing room, sir. Forgive me. Are you Princess Sazakina? Yes, yes, yes. I'm Princess Sazakina. You are the son of our neighbors. Sit down. 572. Forgive all this mess. We've just moved in. 204. Sit down, sit down. There. Remove the books. Well? I've, I've brought a message from my mother. Barney Patty, what have you done with my keys? Oh. You haven't seen them, have you? No. Oh. My mother said, would you and your daughter like to have lunch with us tomorrow? Of course, of course. We'd be glad, too. We'd come at once. You look very young. How old are you? Sixteen. Ah, these are the beautiful years. You don't have to be formal with me. We live very simply. Do you always come to the country? My father rented the house just for the summer. His family used to live here. In the same house? No, no. That house is destroyed now, practically. Ah, oh, I don't like the country. I find it very boring. Especially in the evening, there's nothing to do. And all these flies. Still, I suppose that after all this trouble in the city, it's safer here. Ah, Senaida, this is our neighbor, sir. What did you say your name was? Alexander. Ah, Alexander. I knew a police officer, Alexander, once. A charming man. Bonnie Fatty, I've found my keys. You can stop I've searching. I've already seen Monsieur Alexander. May I call you that? Where? Where did you see him? Are you busy at this minute? No. Good. You can help me wind some wool. Go on, she won't bite you. Come. Sit down. What did you think of me yesterday? I don't think you really approved of me, did you? You don't know me very well yet. I'm strange. I like to be told the truth, always. You're 16, I'm 21. That makes me much older than you, so you must obey me. You must always tell the truth. Look at me. Why don't you look at me? I like you. I like your face. I have a feeling we're going to be friends. Do you like me? Princess. First of all, call me Zinaida. And secondly, I really don't understand why children... <laughs> I mean young people. Never say what they feel. Leave that to grown-ups. You do like me. Of course, I like you very much. I'm not trying to hide anything. Are you still at school? Well, it's sort of a school. It's higher. I'm a student. I'm going to university soon. Oh, I see. You're completely grown up.
how you do stare. Sinaida, come and see. The lieutenant has brought you a kitten. A kitten? Oh, it's a sweet little kitten. Oh, oh, how sweet. Oh, oh, look at her little tail. Oh, oh, like a statue. Yesterday you said you wanted a tabby kitten with big ears. Your wish is my command. So today I found you one. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. You're very kind. You're very welcome. <laughs> Bessie, quickly, the milk, please. He's hungry. Oh, poor little darling. Oh, you couldn't have made me happy. Oh, it's oh. at your command. <laughs> the soldier boy's queen. The rosy little tongue it has. <laughs> and what a big mouth. Mouth? All the better to eat you with, my dear. Take it out, one of <laughs> For one kitten, one kiss. Two kittens. Oh, he's a naughty kitten. There. But he's very pretty. I can tell my mother you will come tomorrow. Do tell her, young man. Do tell her. <laughs> Be sure and come and see us again, Monsieur Alexander. you won't want to borrow from us. That's quite possible. However, it doesn't matter as far as tomorrow's lunch is concerned. I think you told me you'd ask your daughter, too. I heard she's a very charming and cultivated girl. Ah, uh, then she doesn't take after your mother. Nor after the father. She was cultivated, too. That's stupid. <laughs> Is that the young princess? Yes. Have you met her before? Yes, this morning. I went to see her mother. I went to the phone. 
relations with the city have broken down. I just wanted to tell you in case you didn't know. Now, uh, this ambassador has been dead for some years, I believe. Where was the ambassador to? I don't know. Get so confused in all these details. Anyway, the servant took him down to the cellar to show him this barrel full of meat. In the cellar? They kept it in the cellar so that nobody should know it was there. Is that the page you were talking about? It's very pretty. Very pretty. Yes, he was ambassador. One of the Balkan countries, I believe. You said he was dead. Well, he is. This was his house. Where does that noise come from? From the factory next door. Oh, yes, where they make that terrible wallpaper. Isn't it strange to build a factory in such a beautiful mansion? Well, you see, the owner was forced to divide the old manor house into three parts. And one wing they turned into a factory. Ah, just can't fly. You went to the main part. Yes. I heard your husband's family lived here. Yes, in the neighborhood. And so I heard. Your family were very wealthy, weren't they? And then they lost everything. So that's why you married? Well, anyway, it's terrible, terrible. It's the newspaper, sir. Put it on the table. Now, I wonder if you know the officials in this district. I'm afraid we don't. So glad. That's why I wrote to you and your dear husband. Such a distinguished gentleman. He would be doing me a great kindness if you would ask them just to leave me alone to lead my own life in peace. The police can be so difficult if you have no influence. I doubt there's anything much we can do. Then that's settled. Good. Such an excellent lunch. Fresh vegetables. <laughs> you just can't find in the city nowadays. And the cheese is so dry. You're very lucky here in the country to be able to entertain like this. We just don't have any food to give our guests. And the wine smells of roses. You can't drink it. Oh, well, c'est la vie. Thank you so very much. I really quite enjoy myself. Oh, uh, you won't mind lending me your newspaper, will you? Oh, uh, well... Does your radio still work? I'll see if you get it back. Yes? Yes. Now, I'm relying on you for your support. Don't forget. Of course, we do whatever we can. Oh, oh is your butler accompanying us? Yes. Very much. Come to the party tonight at 8 o'clock. Without fail. Still raining, I see. <laughs> well, here I am, a princess, no less. But what's the good of a title if you can't get up to eat? <laughs> terribly conceited. Not that she's got anything to be conceited about. That makes her mean in grisette. Have you ever seen a grisette? Thank God I haven't. Thank God indeed. But in that case, how can you judge? Hmm? Hmm. What an extraordinary habit you have ceased with me in your life. Kiss. Bravo. Kiss. Kiss. Oh, no. You do it properly. 
I am master of ceremonies, so let me see you do it here. In the glass case. <laughs> I would have done the same, wouldn't you? Unfair. It's unfair, unfair. Most discreet, but too long. Yes. Enough. Oh, enough. 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 Come on. Enough. 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 Well, did you kiss her? Splendid. The poem is called The Murder. Silent was the marble. Silently glittered the glass. Can uh, this book, this bit is from book three. I would have read you from the beginning part. I think she's more in keeping with these circumstances of the moment. Certainly. So, uh, Dr. Lucian, would you mind? Thank you. Well, I start from the beginning. Silent was the marble. Silently glittered the glass. Silent stood the guard in the wind frozen into bronze. Perhaps I should just explain. This, this tyrant, this appalling tyrant, is dead, it seems, after so long. It's dead at long last, and the people can hardly dare breathe in case it really hasn't happened. Suddenly he may come to life again without warning or reason, and their freedom and uh, hope will be crushed all over again. So, Dr. Lucian, would you mind? Thank you. So I'll start again. Silent was the marble. Silently glittered the glass. Silent stood the guard in the wind, frozen into bronze. But the coffin stirred. Air breathed through its bolts as they shouldered him through the mausoleum door. Coffin was slipping gently on its way, grazing their bayonets with its sides. He was as silent as they but threatening silence. Darkly clenched the embalmed fist, so cradled himself within the man, miming his death charade, stamping the mocking burden of his body on those who carried him, somehow to draw upon them the power of their deliverance and filch the trick of sneaking from the grave, so that he might yet reach out to these, the men once named unreasonable. His dreams have not interred themselves. He crouches between then and now and pours it in upon himself. So, I say to you, our government, I call upon you by this tomb. Double the guard. No, triple it, so that he will never rise up again amongst us.
Why bother? It'll fall down soon enough, anyway. I have a secret. Do you want to hear it? My secret is that I alone among men have no mystery. My mystery? That I alone among men have no secret. Look. I love you, Zinaida. I love you. You are not to spend time with these people. They are not comme il faut. You should be reading and studying. You didn't go to bed until daybreak. It's hardly surprising you can't get up in the morning if you never go to bed at night. Where were you? With some friends. Who? The people next door. They are poor and vulgar. I thought you were responsible, mature, intelligent. And then you spend half the night with people who can't pay their debts. Look, it isn't that important. Will you please leave the education of my son to me? I used to sit at this window in the evening. All you see from here belonged to him. dining room. You 
you know what gives man freedom? No, what? Will. Their own will. And power, too, which is better than freedom. Know what you want, and you will be free. You will be in command. Saddle me a horse. Can I come with you? No, not this time. Ride by yourself if you want to. And tell the coachman I'm not going. I've got to go somewhere else. Can you type? Type, yes, a little. Can you type this letter for me? I'd be glad to. Come now. Put it down here. That's right. Now, all I want you to do is to type this letter. You see, I've written it out. These machines are so difficult to manage. I did try, but I didn't make a very good job of it. Now you can read my handwriting. Get along. It's a very important letter. Get along. Type it now. Type it. Fina? Is that you? Fina? your hand, I'll stick a pin in it and you'll be ashamed in front of this young man. Does that hurt? Not in the least. Not if it gives you pleasure. And doesn't it hurt you to know that I'm a heartless flirt? Thy soul moves still. 
suppose a girl beside me at this stove betwixt me and the dreadful outer brink of obvious death, where I, who thought to sink, was caught up into love. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways I love thee to the depth and breadth and the height my soul can reach. I love thee to the level of every day's quiet need by sun and candlelight. I love thee freely as men strive for right. I love thee purely as they turn from praise. I love thee with the passion of my life. Do you love me very much? Do you? You do. I see it in everything you do. Oh, the same eyes. Same eyes. Oh, I made such a mess of things. God, if only I could leave, go away, anywhere, the further the better. God, I'm so unhappy, so unhappy. But why? Recite some poetry to me. You chant it, but that doesn't matter. It's because you're young. Recite on Georgia's hills. The darkness of night lies over the hills of Georgia. And the sound of the river Aragua keeps to my ears. I am so sad, so calm. My sadness is clear and full. My sorrow is entirely composed of you. Entirely of you. My melancholy cannot be troubled or touched. And my heart aches and burns with love of you. It cannot help it. Loving you is all now that is left. I cannot help it. Loving you is all now that is left. I don't want to hear. Let's go. My love is with Mama. He bought me his poem, but I left him. He's hurt too now. What can one do? Perchance, perchance, oh. it was some secret oh. rival that sudden cast oh, fell on me. Mama. Oh. oh, Just listen to this. This one line. Perchance, it was some secret rival that sudden cast his spell on thee. One day you will discover. Only don't be angry with me. Why do you keep hanging around here, young man? Shouldn't you be studying while you're young? How do you know I don't work a lot at home? You do? Oh, very well, if you say so. Is she ill? Let's say she's not very well. I'll give her something. I don't think you've made a very fortunate choice. What do you mean? Somebody's got to warn you, I suppose. Can't you see what sort of a house this is? It's all very well for an old bachelor like me, but you've got a tender skin. The atmosphere here is bad for you. It's not healthy. What isn't healthy? Young man, young man, you can't pretend to me. It's written all over your face. Not that I can talk. I shouldn't be coming here either. It smells beautiful and heady in a greenhouse, doesn't it? But you wouldn't dream of living there all your life, would you? Don't you know what's going on? What is going on? Go back to your studies, Alexander. Forget all this. Pourquoi est-ce que tu dois me regarder toujours comme ça? The atmosphere is bad for you. Who are you going to see tomorrow? Are you going to the mausoleum again? You would?
spying on me? Alexander, what have I done? Well, I'll wear your hair in my locket. That will perhaps comfort you a little. And now, goodbye. I told you to go. Why don't you leave me alone? You keep saying you love me. If you really love me, jump down. Poor child. What have I made you do? Why did you do this? Why did you obey me? What do you think you're doing? Get up, you naughty boy. You're not even hurt. Don't look at me like that. Go home at once. Do you hear me? Don't ever dare follow me again. The trouble began at 11 o'clock, when a military tried to turn back some thousand of strikers at one of the bridges connecting the industrial quarters on the island with the main part of the city. At first, the soldiers used the sticks and truncheons, then the flat of their bayonets, and finally they fired. 
the passion of the mob broke loose like a bursting dam. The people, seeing the dead and dying carried away in all directions, the pavement soaked with blood, cried aloud for vengeance. Do you think we should leave? Alexander. so sad. No? Can't you tell me? Well, I get so worried when you disappear and I don't know where you are or who you're with. <laughs> you don't have to tell me. I know how you feel. Imagine you're married, for example. Tell me how you'd spend the time with your wife. Would you lock her up? I would. And stay with her yourself? Absolutely. Wonderful. And uh, if she got fed up with this and deceived you... I'd kill her. But if she ran away? I'd catch her and still kill her. Now, let's suppose I were your wife. What would you do then? I'd kill myself. <laughs> ah, Monsieur Alexander. We haven't seen you for a long time. You've deserted us. Come, sit down. Come. We're making up stories. Everyone has to tell something he's never told before. It's my turn now. Imagine. A splendid chamber, a summer night, and a wonderful ball. A young queen is giving this ball. Everywhere is gold, marble, crystals, lights, diamonds, flowers, all the delights of luxury. A question. Does the queen have a husband? No. Why a husband? Indeed. Why a husband? Silence. Merci. The queen listens to the music, but doesn't look at a single one of the guests. Six windows are open from top to bottom, and beyond them a dark sky with huge stars and a dark garden with huge trees. The queen looks out into the garden. There, among the trees, stands a man in the darkness. And the queen looks and thinks, all of you gentlemen are noble, clever, rich. You surround me. Every one of my words is precious to you. You're all ready to die at my feet. I possess you. But there, in the garden, there stands and waits for me the one I love. He is not rich. He has no rich clothing, no precious stones. Nobody knows him, but he's waiting for me. He's certain I'm coming, and I am. And there is no power in the world that can stop me once when I want to go with him, and be with him, and lose myself with him. There, in the garden's darkness, amid the rustling of the trees. That is made up. And what about us, gentlemen? If we were among those guests, and knew of that happy man in the garden, what would we do? Well, I'd tell I you... Wait, wait! I'd... I'll tell you myself what each of you would do. You would challenge him to a duel, Belosanov. And you, my enough. You would write some very cutting, some very scathing article about him. <laughs> oh, no, you wouldn't. I don't think you know how to be cutting. 
I think you could write a fierce, romantic poem denouncing his politics. And you, Yelmatsky, you would borrow money from him. Oh, no, you wouldn't. You'd lend at exorbitant interest. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I don't know what you would do. As your doctor, I advise you not to give parties. You don't want to have guests. Perhaps you're right. And you, Count Malevsky. Yes, what about me? I think you'd send him poison chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, As for you, I Oh, no. That's enough. Let's do something else. You would follow her like a dog. As her page, of course. I never gave you the right to be insulting. I must ask you to leave. Well, I think the night is right. a game. I assure you I had no intention of offending anyone. Oh, very well. You may stay. Perhaps we became angry for nothing. After all, you find it amusing to hurt people. You're not still angry, are you? It's silly. After all, it wasn't I who called you a page. She gave you that title. Not that you perform your duties very well. Why not? Well, you should never leave your mistress's side. You should know everything she does. In fact, you should watch her, day and night. What do you mean? Day and night. By day it's light and there are lots of people around, but at night? Well, anything could happen at night. Why don't you take my advice? Don't sleep, watch. Keep your eyes open and watch. Particularly in the garden at night. Past ten. It's eleven. Where's father? Out. He will be home late tonight. Don't go away. Stay with me. I'm going for a walk. I'll be back soon. All right, I'll wait up for you. Don't bother.
You want to see your garden? If you will, sir. Come on. Why don't you undo your collar? It doesn't matter, sir. We're used to it. evil, darkness, sin there is in you. How much there is in me that is stupid. But I'm not playing with you. I love you. You gave her money. It's a loan. The old lady needs it. It's my money. You never cared for our family. You're always looking for something else. A cold. With no heart. I wouldn't say that at your age. I can't bear it. I can't face it in front of everybody. Philip! Theodore! My husband and I have decided to go back to town. Pack the suitcases and get ready. Goodbye. We're going back to town. <laughs> I thought she was staying till autumn. No, my mother. 
She isn't feeling too well. Well, I do understand. I haven't felt well since I've been here. I have a constant headache. I'm always so tired. to say goodbye, probably forever. Perhaps you've heard we're leaving. Is it so easy for you to leave us? Thank you for coming. I was afraid I wouldn't see you again. Think of me kindly. I know I've been cruel, but I'm not so bad as you think. Really, I'm not. You must have a bad opinion of me. Me? Yes, you. No matter what you do. No matter how cruel you are to me, I shall always love you, Zenaida. I shall always adore you till the day I die. Wait here for me.
have some tobacco for me? Vous devez vous séparer de cette femme. Non, je ne peux pas. C'est pour moi, pour toi. Hmm? Non, je ne peux pas. What did you do with it? Did you miss me? What have you done with your whip? What have you done with your whip? Did you drop it? I threw it away.
Dolsky's here. What's Madame Dolsky? Zinaida, former princess. You remember the mansion? You were in love with her. She's married Dolsky. But of course. And she's here. Where? In the theater. Oh, no, but she's staying here in town with him. What's she like? Oh, nice enough. Well off, I suppose. Civil service like me. Still, I suppose, after that little episode. You must know about that. She was pretty lucky to find a husband at all. The consequences and, uh, and you, my friend, Hill University. My father died. That happens. Well... Has she changed? Oh, no. Not at all. He wrote me a letter the day he died. All he said was, beware of the love of women. Beware of that happiness. That poison. Where is she staying? Hotel Continental. Why don't you go and see her? She'd love to see you. If anything, she's more beautiful than ever. <laughs> A week went by, another passed. And when I finally went to the Hotel Continental and asked for Madame Dolsky, I found out that she had died four days before, practically without warning, in childbirth. And that's what it had all come to. That's what it had been headed for. Rushing and excited, this young, passionate, brilliant life. From indifferent lips I heard the news of her death, and indifferently I listened to it. all the treasures of the universe. Even grief pleases you. Even sorrow becomes you. You are self-confident and bold. You say, I alone am alive. But for you too, the days run on and vanish without trace or number, like wax in the sunlight, like snow. A few days after I'd learned about Zinaida's death, I myself was present at the death of a poor old woman who lived in her house. Covered with rags on hard boards, with a bag under her head, she died hard and painfully. All her life had been passed in a bitter struggle with everyday needs. She had not known joy. She had not tasted the cup of happiness. Shouldn't she be glad of death with its freedom and peace? Instead, as long as her chest still painfully heaved under the ice-cold hand lying on it, until her last strength had left her, the old woman kept crossing herself and whispering, Lord, forgive my sins. And I remember that there, by this poor old woman's deathbed, I became terrified for Zinaida, for my father, and for myself. <laughs> 